Oh, thank you much. <clears throat> I thank the organizers for inviting me. And uh, the plan is to uh, review some uh, progress related to uh, integrable deformations of ADS um, mo uh, sigma models related to super -cossets. So uh, what I will be talking about is based on few papers written with people uh, in the audience, few of them, well, all of them it looks like most of them are in the audience. And there are some uh, recent papers which I will also refer to, in particular the last one, which is uh, quite uh, complete in a way and useful. So uh, in IGST 2015, there was a talk by Ben Hoare and uh, basically on the same subject, and I'll review what happened after. But I'll, I'll also give some background material. So let me start with um, uh, the beginning. So uh, we try to understand uh, integrable deformations of the family examples of ADS as uh, super cosset sigma models. And motivation is uh, there are several motivations. One of them is just to understand uh, integrable solvable string models, but also eventually we would like to understand if there is any connection to young to deform deformations of super young males. And uh, the two recently studied examples are uh, the so-called ETA model and lambda model, which will be basic models I will be discussing. And one is like current current deformation of uh, the usual principal Carroll model or Cosset model or super Cosset model. And the other is um, in a set in maybe thought of as deformation of non-abelian dual of super Cosset model. Uh, and it's based on a uh, kind of Vesumina Witten type model. <coughs> So both are classically integrable, and uh, they give uh, couple symmetric green schwartz sections, and uh, they are scale invariant, but there is an issue whether they are actually define a string theory in the sense that they have wild invariance, local conformal invariance. And for that, they need to solve sub standard supergravity equations, and uh, uh, so that is an issue whether that's actually the case. Uh, some, of these some of these models actually are related to standard ADS 5S5 by T duality and various generalizations. So uh, that will be one of the topics which I'll be discussing. <coughs> uh, but addressing these questions uh, actually led to uh, what's called, what I will be referring to as generalized supergravity equations. These are essentially conditions of uh, scale invariance of green schwartz sigma model rather than while invariants, which are equivalent to standard supergravity equations. Uh, these scale invariance conditions, the generalized supergravity equations, happen to be also the same as kappa symmetry conditions, classical kappa symmetry conditions for green schwartz superstring. Uh, so the uh, usual uh, assumption that kappa symmetry implies supergravity equations are not always true. And, uh, there are some important exceptions and which will be related to the story. So let me start with uh, the beginning of uh, just review uh, bosonic sigma models. So if we have a, an integrable sig string sigma model, we'd like to construct another one. What we, we, what we can do, we can apply standard T dualities, assuming in the case where we have iso commuting linear isometries, what we can do, we can do uh, T duality and various linear shifts of coordinates and then another T duality like TST transformation. And a basic example is this lunian maldacen construction of uh, which is uh, deform beta deformation of S5 corresponding to um, N equal 1 super, super conformal theory on the gauge side <coughs> which is deformation of N equal 4. Uh, now if we have non-abelian symmetry we can uh, applying on abelian T duality, which will also give integral model, um, or there is a more general co concept of Poisson lead duality, which I'll discuss later. Uh, but what are other options even with T duality? One, in principle, I would like to, one can think of com applying T duality in several times in the case of non-commuting isometries. And in general, this is not possible because T duality generically breaks uh, global symmetries. If you, for example, t-dualize a sphere uh, along the uh, angle direction, then you'll get a, a space which has no um, um, 
we, you essentially break the other uh, SO, uh, SO3 symmetries <coughs> in the way. So uh, one needs to think when w such TGLs can be done in sequence. And um, it's possible, assuming we, we include also nonlinear coordinate transformation. So the basic example is uh, ADS and point correct coordinates where one could dualize along XM, and that's a familiar story related to dual conformal symmetry. Uh, but what one can do also, one could uh, first dualize in XM and then do coordinate transformation, nonlinear coordinate redefinition, and then dualize along Z direction or uh, logarithm of Z, <coughs> which here I call it uh, raw, that phi should be actually raw. So uh, even for non-commuting uh, isometries, one could combine them, uh, one can do field redefinition and then apply um, second T-duality. So uh, there is a caveat here that if the first T-duality in, in, induces linear dilaton, and then uh, in fact under such transformation one will get an integral, classically integral model, but it will not be solving usual while invariance conditions, rather these generalized equations. So that will be uh, the story which I'll discuss later. So generically, these T-dualities will induce generalized supergravity equations, will lead to solutions of generalized equations. Uh, there is another issue with nonlinear redefinitions that uh, it's not clear whether the open string picture of T-duality will actually apply and what is the implication on gauge theory side. But in principle, this is an interesting possibility to think of such uh, combining TDLs with nonlinear redefinitions to construct new models. The reason why I'm re um, <coughs> commenting on this is that, that that story will become relevant for particularly to deformed models, which I'll discuss. So what are the options? So generically, we can just start with, uh, apart from t thinking of abelian TDLs, we can just start with, say, principal current model and try to deform it by adding some bilinear currents <coughs> with non-trivial matrix, which may depend on the group element. Uh, so when uh, such deformation preserves integrability, when it preserves conformal invariance, one could try to study these conditions. And uh, if we first look at conformal invariance, uh, try to preserve conformal invariance, we need to start not with principal current model, but rather with the minimum model. And uh, the, one could think of kind of general Vesumina type model by, which I will call Q model, by starting with, say, gauge Vesumina model, which may be a f over f gauge Vesumina model of f over g, and adding a term which contains just constant matrix. Q is constant, here I subtracted one, um, times uh, bilinear gauge fields. <coughs> so this is like gauge Vesumina model if Q equal uh, one, um, and A belongs, well, to f or algebra of f of or g. Uh, but generically, uh, the matrix which enters uh, the story is this adjoint matrix CABG. It's just defined like this, and constant matrix Q. And then if one integrates uh, over gauge field, one gets a model like, uh, essentially like this, plus Vesumina term. <coughs> so uh, special cases are Vesumina model or gauge Vesumina model, but generically uh, the structures like this, where this matrix M, curly M, um, uh, is parameterized by Q. And it depends on G in, through this adjoint matrix. So uh, if, if one imposes while invariance conditions, one gets certain condition on Q, which looks which is kind of complicated algebraic equation on Q, which is <coughs> related, uh, which is, has similar structure to what's called Virasoro master equation, which allows one to construct uh, uh, essentially, we are so algebra from Katz-Moody algebra in a uh, certain context. <coughs> but uh, if one instead uh, imposes uh, integrability rather than requiring conformal invariance, what the, the condition on Q are different. And the simplest example is just to choose Q proportional to identity, then this curly M matrix becomes <coughs> 1 over 1 minus lambda C, where lambda is a constant, and C is a joint matrix. So that is uh, essentially this lambda model, uh, which, is, which can be thought of as non-abelian due of uh, deformation of non-abelian due of principal chiral model. <coughs> and uh, this model is not conformal. It doesn't solve these conditions. But uh, to make it conformal, we can embed it into the superstring. So uh, 
bosonic lambda model, uh, explicitly, it looks like this. So you take gauge with a minimal f of f uh, and add this quadratic in a term. Or, so for corset case, here this is a corset projector. P2 is, uh, is the same as P of f of project, projected to f over g. P0 is, is some group g. Uh, gamma is, is just constant parameter of deformation <coughs> related to this lambda. And then there are uh, limits like gamma equal infinity gives uh, f over g gauge with a minimal and gamma going to zero with k level taken to infinity actually leads to a first order action uh, which interpolates between usual corset model where A is just a current and uh, non-abelian dual of uh, corset model. If we integrate A, F is the field strength of A, we get a model depending on V, which is an uh, element of the algebra, and that will be a non-abelian dual of a usual corset model. Uh, so uh, again, this model will not be conformal uh, because we deformed away from gauge with a minimal, but embedding into superstring, it will give a conformal model. Now, uh, going back to principal chiral model, uh, so that, that story was about starting with Bezo minimal or gauge Bezo minimal deforming it. Uh, instead, we can just return back to course at principal chiral model and just add uh, a, a, some matrix K uh, in between two currents, which again <coughs> is depending on G in a particular way. And that uh, um, essentially, this deformation is parameterized by a constant which is here is called kappa, it's related to eta, that's the name of eta deformation. Um, it's just one parameter which uh, um, comes into the story. And Rg here is, is determined by a, mat a constant matrix acting on the algebra, uh, which is subject to modified classical young baxter equation. So here C is a constant which can be absorbed into R. So essentially there are two non-trivial cases with C equals zero, uh, plus one minus one, again related by analytic continuation. Uh, so uh, there is a canonical choice for, for R in the case of C equal one, which is just plus minus on plus minus roots and zero on cartons. And uh, to lead in order, this deformation is just adding this ma matrix RAB times two currents. Uh, <coughs> in fact, right currents in this, in this notation. So this model is classically integrable, it has lux, uh, uh, pair, it, uh, the symmetry algebra is broken to uh, cartons times G. There are hidden conserved charges forming Q-deformed um, algebra with parameter of deformation related to uh, uh, this kappa. And simplest example is squash test three. So similar story goes in the case of coset model. If we start with coset model again, put some K which is related to, uh, which is <laughs> depending on projected to the coset. So if kappa is zero, it's just a coset model. And um, here, um, the simplest example is what's called sausage model, is deformed S2. So uh, these lambda and eta models, in principle, they look, the actions look very different. It, they have many different symmetries. But in fact, they're closely related. One relation is through a certain limit, which we discussed with Ben Hoare. Um, it's a certain limit which makes lambda, mo lambda model uh, having isometries the same as isometries uh, as in the eta model and certain analytic continuation. And I'm not going to discuss this, but they also uh, are closely related in uh, classically uh, in phase space description. They can be thought of as pairs of Poisson-Li uh, dual models. And uh, uh, essentially lambda model is like uh, in this uh, context of poisson lead duality is like a model defined on, uh, for diagonal subgroup uh, and uh, eta model is related to soluble subgroup member of this uh, poisson lead duality. So in a sense, some classic, classically they are like two uh, different uh, faces of a single uh, first order interpolating theory. Now, poisson lead duality is, uh, is an interesting uh, uh, generalization of non-abelian duality. It applies when the, there is no isometries at all, but there is certain Poisson-Li duality, Poisson-Li symmetry uh, uh, present, and in a, in a sense, uh, um, uh, it's it's a relation between two models parameterized having this current current structure, but 
with different matrices E, which are non-constant, non depending on G, and uh, define them to different groups of the same dimension, which may be thought of as embedded into, say, complexification of G, or um, they are parts of the uh, Dreamfield uh, double. Uh, so I'm, again, I'm not going to discuss this in detail, just to uh, quickly uh, mention that this E is uh, defined by constant matrix E0, and P is uh, just uh, specified in terms of the group elements. Uh, but uh, what is important uh, that these two uh, different models not having isometries, they are actually related classically through the Poisson lead duality, essentially through um, the different currents related to momentum of the other model. Now, this classical uh, relation, of which a uh, basic example is um, uh, due to the, uh, the double being O to 2 group and one group being SL2 and the other is Borel. Uh, um, it's, this example is uh, directly related to ADS2, uh, directly related to its deformation of S2, which is uh, possibly due to the corresponding lambda deformation. And that generalizes to super coset case, as was, as was discussed by uh, Viseda. Um, now, what, uh, there was a recent paper by Klimchik who pointed out that this generic model, E model, uh, uh, or, which is essentially defined on complex uh, uh, group and contains these uh, two, two Poisson Lee dual models as parts. It uh, incorporates naturally this Q model. So Klimchik Severa um, E model is essentially possibly due to uh, this general Q model, which I introduced earlier. So that uh, generalizes this uh, duality between eta deformation and lambda def deformation to more general um, case when you have parameters like not just single deformation parameter, but a matrix of parameters. Now, the, me, the importance of this Poisson lead duality is not completely clear at the quantum level. Uh, for example, um, it's not clear whether it preserves, again, maps, say, supergravity solution to supergravity solution. In fact, it most likely maps supergravity solution to generalized uh, supergravity equation, so it may preserve scale invariance. Um, but uh, that remains to be seen. So it's, at the moment, it's just a classical uh, symmetry, but it may have if we ignore the issue of scale invariance, it may have implications at the level of quantum integrability. Now, switching now to super case, uh, so the basic example of ADS super S5 super coset model <coughs> is based on this super coset and uh, with standard Z4 decomposition uh, of four projectors on the, on the group G on a coset and P1 and P3 are fermionic subspaces, so the Green-Schwartz action uh, for this ADS5-S5, it has this structure with K0 being uh, this combination of projectors. <coughs> so the eta deformed models uh, are defined by essentially modifying this K in a certain prescribed way, namely uh, there will be a projector, a new P kappa projector, which is combination of this P2 and P1, P3, with certain uh, coefficient dependent deformation parameter. And then there is also, again, this RG um, uh, matrix defined by constant matrix R acting on the algebra, satisfying this modified Yambach's equation. Uh, so again, this, mo this model is classically integrable. It has a certain kappa sy fermionic symmetry, which is analogous to kappa symmetry. And uh, there are actually two different models. So here I introduce this constant C, uh, which I also put uh, inside this projector just uh, to indicate that when c equals zero, uh, this projector becomes standard one. But if c equals one, it has this kappa dependence. Now, that's important to have the uh, classical uh, integrability of the Lux connection. So in fact, there are two different models described by this m action, uh, two different non-trivial models. So one is uh, eta one model, or eta uh, c equal one uh, model, corresponding to non-split, uh, defined by non-split uh, modified young box solution R. And uh, the split case, which is this was in particular discussed in recent paper by 
in this paper, but uh, it's essentially related by analytic continuation and it has, doesn't have real um, uh, solution, uh, real solutions in the case of PSC 224. It doesn't re re lead to real models. Uh, so essentially all this, most of discussions are for C equal plus one. And uh, another model uh, is a C equal zero model where R is subject to classical Yambach equation. And that was discussed by Yoshida and collaborators. So uh, in the first case, uh, all ADS5, S5 is deformed, supersymmetry is broken, and uh, what remains is six, as isometries, is six Cartan directions of the original SO2 of four, SO6. Now, in, uh, and this model is possibly due to this lambda model, which I'll mention uh, for the super corset, I'll de define it in a second. Now, the other model, uh, it has R matrix, which can be written uh, essentially parameterized by constant matrix R I G, small R I G, or equivalently, it can be thought of as a matrix on the product of algebras, and uh, it's just a di di <coughs> direct product of two generators anti-symmetrized. So there are two different cases, which is abelian when these generators uh, commute, or non-abelian and special sub-cases, what's called Jordanian deformations, Jordanian R matrices. Now here, one could deform ADS5 and S5 separately, and uh, one can preserve some supersymmetry, some isometries, and abelian models, in a sense, are trivial. They are related by standard TST transformations to undeformed ADS5. There's, as far as I know, there should be paper by Van Tongeren, um, uh, which appears to prove this in general. Now, uh, the Poisson Lee dual of uh, this C equals zero model is not, so far, it wasn't discussed, but it should somehow be related to. Q model type analog of this lambda model. So here we have a matrix, so there should be some matrix entering also the lambda model action. Now, if we start with these models, we can ask what's the background fields for them. And uh, so here uh, we need to choose some particular parameterization of the group element and then compute the action explicitly in terms of coordinates and deduce what is the metric and symmetric tensor Ramon f uh, fields and then ask whether these models are consistent as string theories, whether they were while invariant. In the case of Itaman model, there's a long story, which is uh, how to get this uh, background fields, and that was discussed in papers by Rutunov, Barsat, and Frolov. And essentially, the story is that these uh, background fields do not solve standard supergravity equations. But in fact, uh, these background, these, this background ha happens to be uh, t-dual to a solution of supergravity which has non-isometric dilaton. So what that means that we cannot t-dualize back, so this t-duality is, is basically classical t-duality which maps this action to, to another action and then one finds that this new action has a background which can be supported by a dilaton but it's non-isometric, so that means one cannot dualize back. So essentially this background solves generalized supergravity equations. Uh, and uh, which I'm going to, to introduce. And uh, these equations are essentially conditions of classical kappa symmetry of this action, which indeed are satisfied uh, because eta model has this symmetry. Now, uh, these generalized equations, in, uh, in fact, are equivalent uh, um, to conditions of uh, classical BRST symmetry in the pure spinner approach. And in, for, in fact, uh, at linearized level, that was discussed by, earlier by Mikhailov uh, in the context of pure spinner approach. Um, so uh, the deep meaning why this eta model doesn't lead to uh, wild invariant, uh, um, wild invariant uh, back background uh, remains to be understood, but I'll later make some comments which may be uh, indicating what's the reason. Now, uh, the eta zero model, the one which is defined by just uh, classical Yambach equation, uh, our matrix uh, satisfying classical Yambach equation, as I mentioned, abelian models are just due to it as five. As five uh, generic non-abelian models uh, appear to, uh, to give background which solve just generalized supergravity equation, which was kind of uh, understood uh, recently. In, um, uh, in a sense, they, they can be thought of as certain limits of eta one models. 
And uh, again, uh, the T dual to them, classical T dual to them, uh, gives a supergravity solution with non isometric dilatons. And uh, there are examples uh, which appear to be just related by classical T duality and nonlinear redefinitions to ADS 5S5. And that may be actually a generic uh, case. Now, there is a special class of uh, non abelian ETS 0 models pointed out in a recent paper by Barsat and Wolf which uh, in fact solve standard supergravity equations. And they are defined by uh, what was called in this paper by unimodular deformations. Uh, so R, R, uh, the operator R or the matrix R should satisfy the condition uh, like this or equivalently this, um, uh, the matrix on the uh, product of algebras defined in this way should have uh, Rig satisfying this condition. So there are examples uh, for ADS 5S5. Oh, there are examples of such models which are actually related to ADS 5S5 by uh, TST duality, kind of generalized, uh, where one combines TST with nonlinear coordinate redefinitions. And these TST are done in two non-commuting directions. I'll give examples if I'll have time. Um, so now, what about lambda model for the super corset? <coughs> So uh, essentially, it's like bosonic model, but there is an important uh, difference in how this uh, projector P uh, entering this def 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 second part to gauge with amino part uh, is constructed in terms of uh, uh, P2 coset projector and fermionic projector. So there's a particular dependence on lambda, which is required to have uh, you know, integrability. This model has no uh, global symmetry at all. Um, and in a limit, k infinity lambda to one, it's again related to what may be called the interpolating action between coset and non-abelian dual of coset. Um, so this model is actually scale invariant that was checked directly. It has fermionic upper, analog of fermionic upper symmetry. And uh, the corresponding background can be extracted and uh, in, the, in general, it's very quite complicated, and the dilaton here comes out of integrating of the gauge fields. Uh, is determined by the matrix which one gets when we integrate gauge fields to get the model just parameterized by G. Now, uh, it was checked directly that uh, in the ADS2S2 and the ADS3S3 cases, there are supergravity solutions which correspond to this background. And uh, in fact, there is a general argument for type 2B supergravity embedding. So the lambda model should give the background also should be the same in ADS 5S5, which solves the standard supergravity equations. Now, uh, given the classical uh, relation to, lambda, to eta model through this Poisson Lee duality, one, that obviously raises the question how, uh, what that means. But essentially, this Poisson Lee duality, just like non-abelian T duality, may not generically break, uh, lead from one wild invariant model to another wild invariant model. Uh, so I'll, I guess I skip. The, there is a, some story about bosonic version of this model, which also has embedding into supergravity, which was discussed by Svets and Thompson. Um, so uh, let me now uh, review this story about generalized supergravity equations. <coughs> uh, so. Uh, if we start from the beginning with string sigma model, one could ask when it's uh, scale invariant, or essentially it's in, uh, integral of a trace is zero, stress tensor is zero. And these conditions um, are essentially vanishing of beta functions modular terms which can be removed by field redefinitions or gauge transformations for antisymmetric tensor. So these are usual uh, kind of beta functions for metric and antisymmetric tensor, but the, these terms you, one can add if one allow the freedom of field redefinitions and uh, gauge transformations for the B field. Or equivalently, these terms drop out of on shell in the equations of motion. So if one computes counter terms on shell, then they will go away. Now, in string theory, we have a stronger condition, which is a uh, vanishing of a stress tensor locally. And that's required to have, uh, uh, to have a Gauss-free spectrum. <laughs> to decouple on physical states. So scale invariance in general is not actually equal to conf local conformal invariance uh, in the context of non-compact sigma models or non-unitary models which have time direction. 
so generically here one needs to distinguish between these two concepts. <coughs> and while invariance requires constructing stress uh, vanishing stre uh, the, the stress which vanishes by allowing to add uh, improvement term or dilaton term with two dimensional curvature. And that is possible only if XM, this vector XM is actually gradient of the dilaton and YM is also a gradient, so this term is zero. So these are usual while invariance conditions which are equivalent to standard uh, supergravity equation or an S and S sector of supergravity equations. Um, and uh, uh, so that's a familiar equations falling from the kind of central charge action <coughs> or supergravity action in, more in general. Now, uh, in the case of Green-Schwartz action, uh, written in, in, as, a, as a motion in superspace, um, one has similar, uh, one has analog of the scale invariance conditions where one adds also Ramon fields and uh, um, their equations. And in fact, these are, these generalized scale invariance conditions are nothing but these generalized type two equations which I referred to earlier and which I'll show in a second explicitly. So they are just generalizing these NS and S equations to have also Ramon equations. In general, it needs also to have fermions. And uh, remarkably, these conditions are nothing but classical Kappa symmetry conditions for this model, classical model uh, to have Kappa symmetry. Uh, so that leads to, uh, through analyzing constraints on uh, superspace constraints, that these equations on the fields, which also include fermions in general, but uh, the bottom, the basic point is that uh, in this classical action, there is no dilaton term. So the dilaton actually enters through solution of uh, superspace constraints. And generically, um, there's no reason to expect quantum while invariance conditions coming out of classical Kappa symmetry because there's no R term here. But in general, it needs to add it and uh, to have, to construct traceless stress terms. So some history about these Kappa symmetry constraints, uh, well, uh, it started with the super particle case, which leads to constraints on super young mills, of 10 dimensional super young mills. In the context of Green-Schwartz uh, string, um, uh, the, if supergravity equations are satisfied, if string moves in background, which is uh, <laughs> determined by supergravity equation solutions, then one has classical Kappa symmetry, but converse is not actually true in general. In 11 dimensional case, Kappa symmetry of supermembrane membrane action indeed leads to uh, 11 dimensional supergravity constraints. There, there is no issue. But uh, in, in, um, for the classical 10 dimensional Green Schwartz superstring classical, Kappa symmetry implies this generalized supergravity equation, which equivalent to scale invariance conditions, rather than supergravity equation, which equivalent to wild invariance conditions. So, to make this explicit, so uh, Ivan, uh, the dilaton actually the way how the dilaton enters is uh, through uh, solving constraints on uh, supergeometry, on torsion, and uh, the three form for the B field. And uh, the torsion constraints contain uh, a uh, kind of uh, dilatino superfield chi, which uh, may or may not be written as gradient of some uh, superfield phi, which is dilaton superfield. So generically, this relation is not true. And Kappa symmetry does not imply this relation. And then what one gets is a uh, generalized equation in type one theory. They'll, these look like this. So they will be like this scale invariance condition parameterized by vector x. So there will be a vector x entering these equations. And that x has to do with this chiral, um, with this uh, spinner superfield entering solution of superspace constraints. So in, in, in type two theory, that similar story uh, appears. Uh, and one starts with Green-Schwartz action here written in Nambu form, and the Kappa symmetry conditions are like this. So the basic object here is super revealed by an E in this B field, a B uh, for, to form on the superspace. And Kappa symmetry constraints uh, give this condition on torsion and H, and then they need to be combined with Bianchi identities, and then solving these two together, one finds how torsion uh, uh, depends, uh, is explicitly, uh, can be explicitly written down. And what enters the components of the torsion curvature in superspace is the chiral, is the spinner superfield chi, and two vector superfields, x and i, and um, also by spinner superfield, which is Ramon uh, 
by spinner, parameterized by F A, F A B C, F F three, F one, F three, F five, which is familiar in type to be theory. So most important point is there are two super, two, there are two vectors which enter the story x and i, and these are gene this is so far generic solution of um, of just uh, kappa, classical kappa symmetry constraints. And what, what follows is these generalized equations here written in, in terms of this bispinner um, uh, superfield uh, uh, containing Ramon fluxes. So these are essentially NS equations now containing two vectors x and i. And uh, the, these terms depend on bilinears of uh, Ramon fields. And this is kind of first, uh, first order equation for Ramon field strength, which contains both um, uh, first of the Bianchi identity and dynamical equation for Ramon fields. So uh, this is more explicit form of these bosonic equations, uh, bosonic part of these uh, generalized equations. Uh, so here uh, T is just stress tensor of Ramon fields and there's another curly T is, uh, which enters the anti-symmetric tensor B field equation X and um, there, there is this uh, Roman X which uh, uh, is related to these vectors I and X which I appeared earlier. So I enters explicitly in these Ramon equations. So what are these vectors I, uh, X and I? So I is essentially killing, must satisfy killing the vector equation and X uh, is replaces uh, the gradient of dilaton. So X is essentially generalized dilaton gradient so usual supergravity equation will have i equals zero and uh, i equals zero, this equation will be uh, an x being gradient of phi will be just standard supergravity equations. So i uh, it can be non-zero if the background admits killing vectors. So if there is a, if, if there is a isometry, then there is a solution for i and choosing particular i, one can find the uh, solution of generalized equations uh, which is different from usual supergravity equation. So essentially this uh, scale invariant but not well invariant models should be parenterized by certain vector i and then x is just given in terms of certain scale of i and this b field and uh, times i. So these two sets of equations generalized and standard supergravity they are essentially different only by this measure zero set of special solutions and this uh, furthermore given this special solution of generalized equations is actually classically t dual to standard supergravity equation but with non-isometric dilaton. So what this uh, non-isometric dilaton uh, background, how can it look like? Uh, so non-isometric means that we cannot t dualize back usual, using usual t duality which maps one supergravity solution to another supergravity solution. So to give an example of what this non-isometric dilaton is, so suppose we have some metric like this so Y here is isometry in the metric, and, uh, but the dilaton contains linear in Y term. So suppose this background solves the usual supergravity equations or while invariance conditions. Uh, now the dilaton breaks Y's uh, isometry, so we cannot dualize this background uh, honestly to some other while invariance solution. But if we do formal classical uh, T duality, just ignore dilaton, just dualize this metric, what that will give is solution of the generalized equations uh, which will look like this. So y tilde is a dual coordinate but this vector i will be just related to this coefficient b in the dilaton and x will be given by this expression. So uh, essentially the origin of this vector i is in non-isometric part of the dilaton. So this coefficient b determines this vector i. Now another example is non-abelian t-duality. So if we start with model with non-abelian isometry G, um, which is while invariant, so it's target space is solution of supergravity equations, and then we apply non-abelian t-duality. What we'll get in general is scale invariant model rather than while invariant model. So it will be solution of generalized equations. And the requirement to preserve while invariance, in fact, is that traces of generators of this group G must be zero. Equivalently, the trace of the structure constant should be zero. So the abstraction, when this trace is non-zero, uh, the examples are, uh, were found, were noticed uh, by looking at certain non-semi-simple algebras when G has non-semi-simple non algebra, non-trivial abelian ideal. So essentially we have a, a, some group like Poincare group, non, 
non semi simple, uh, then you can have uh, this condition uh, not satisfied, and you can have scale invariant but not well invariant model obtained uh, after non abelian duality. So one can expect similar story for Poisson Lee duality, and uh, it would be interesting to know what are the conditions to preserve in general the well symmetry in this case. Now, uh, Applying this story to this, going back to this deformed model, lambda and eta model. So here, uh, the basic point is that they can be put in Greenschwartz form. The cup, their symmetry, fermionic symmetry is the standard Kappa symmetry, and then we can just read off what are the consequences. And lambda model should have, which has no isometries, so it must have uh, no solutions for this I vector. So it must have, um, it must correspond to solution of supergravity, standard supergravity equations. But generic eta model may have isometries and they may solve generalized equations. So that needs to be analyzed when this is um, the case or not. But generically, we only have scale invariance for eta models. And in fact, a uh, special subclass of eta zero model, they have uh, special properties. They may actually solve type 2b equations. That was appreciated in this paper by Barsat and Wolf. And some of them may be, or all of them may be related to ADS5S5 by standard or non standard TST transformations. So, um, this analogy with non abelian TDLity may be the reason why lambda model is well invariant, but eta model in general is non scale invariant. So, there may be a certain abstraction, just like in the case of non abelian TDLity. And uh, this unimodular condition is similar to this condition which appears as abstraction in the case of non abelian duality. So that may be deep, may be some reason why lambda model is well invariant, but eta model is not. Now, uh, if I still have five minutes, I just give some details and examples. So uh, let me uh, just give example of uh, how the background for eta model, eta one model looked like. So the usual ADS 5S5 with uh, non-split um, uh, modified Young-Baxter R matrix. So this is a usual ADS 5S5 metric, and the uh, deformed metric was found uh, by these authors. It looks complicated, it contains this kappa uh, parameter, which is parameter of deformation, plus it has complicated B field F1, F3, F5. Now, um, so this background, uh, in fact, solves these generalized equations. It doesn't solve the usual type B supergravity equations, but solves generalized equations. So it has certain I, um, M, and uh, XM uh, is not equal to just <laughs> gradient. But remarkably, applying classical TGLT to this complicated background gives much simpler background, which has, um, which has simple F5 and no other fluxes, and uh, the metric uh, this is T dual metric to the, to the one on the previous slide, yeah, which is, I, I, I will skip details. But the b bottom line is it has just F5, plus it has, uh, this is supergravity solution, which is formally complex because we do T duality in time direction, but it has linear dilaton. So, uh, so dilaton contains uh, linear terms in isometries, and that means we cannot TDUlize back to get another supergravity solution. All we can do is we can do classical TDUlize and get generalized solution. So uh, this is uh, eta one model. Now, if we go to, um, to to go to eta zero model, let me first mention that for generic uh, Greenschwartz generic structure of Greenschwartz sig model for eta and lambda model was studied in this paper, and I'll skip details. So essentially, both models can be put in similar universal form, which is just current, current with certain matrices in between. And then one can analyze classical uh, kappa symmetry condition and derive the supergravity backgrounds. So uh, let me just give some uh, uh, examples for this, um, uh, what's called unimodular models. Uh, so which R matrices are uh, such that the resulting model is all standard supergravity equations? This was this unimodular condition. And essentially, um, analyzing this paper, so um, so the bottom line is that uh, if one has non-abelian R matrix of Jordanian type in SO2,4, the uh, the uh, none of them are this unimodular, so they will correspond to scale in, only scale invariant, but not while invariant models. Now, uh, in the case of SO6 deformation, they are only abelian, 
uh, options. So they're TST of standard ADS 5 S5. And uh, there are non-trivial, non-abelian examples when R solves uh, classical Young Baxter, uh, and uh, they are uh, equivalent to unimodal quasi Frobenius subalgebras. So that's the details I discussed in this paper. But basically, they found a few examples, um, all examples in the four, rank four case, and a few examples in rank six case. And the corresponding R matrices have the structure in terms of generators of SO2,4. Essentially, they are built out of um, translations and uh, rotations or dilatation operator uh, in this kind of uh, form. And uh, essentially, these two pairs, uh, they correspond to, uh, they tell us which isometries are preserved, and they also tell us how we can relate it to ADS5S5 by certain non-commuting TST transformations. So, uh, so what, is, what it means, non-commuting TST, you do first TST in one, say, one, two directions, then nonlinear coordinate redefinition, and then there are the TST in three, four directions. And uh, there is evidence from explicit examples that uh, these models are always TS, TST in that general case to ADS5S5. Do I have one minute? Okay. Um, so in one minute, I'll just show you a few examples. So the first example is a kind of unrelated. It's just a billion one where R is just a product of two translation generators. And the corresponding model is TTST uh, to ADS5S5 in, this, in a canonical way. And this is the background corresponding to non-commutative Supiang Mills discussed by these authors. So that's the metric. And uh, examples which follow will also have similar structure. Now, example, non-trivial example uh, in this recent paper is uh, uh, this one. So you have P1, P2 times rotation generator times P3. So the metric looks somewhat similar to the previous one, but one will need some nonlinear coordinate redefinition to apply a second pair of TST because one isometry, you have two non-commuting isometries, so one uh, isometry you can use to do TST, but then you need to change coordinates to do the other TST. So, so there is a similar example like that, which is kind of related to choice of coordinates um, where one goes from usual play, uh, flat uh, coordinates to another flat coordinates, but with, uh, which are kind of similar to null or before. But again, there are two TSTs when, and in nonlinear coordinate redefinition in between. So the questions uh, which appear when these, in general, when these non-commuting TST are possible, uh, for example, one needs to be sure that dilaton remains isometric in the process, otherwise we'll get mapped to generalized superiority equations, so solutions. And uh, one would maybe like to analyze all different cases starting directly with ADS 5S5. And it's not clear what a gauge theory deals because we do these nonlinear coordinate redefinitions and that may not be having open string to duality interpretation. Uh, in the case of, I'm finishing, so uh, in the case of generic non-abeling uh, R matrix, this eta zero model uh, appears to be not solving supergravity equation, but rather solving the generalized equations. But still, uh, it looks like it still can be related to ADS 5S5 by formal classical T-duality. And, and again, nonlinear coordinate redefinition. An example was in this recent paper by Erlande et al. So this is this example, which I'm not going to discuss. But again, uh, bottom line is that you need to do T-duality plus nonlinear coordinate redefinition plus another T-duality in this case. So in this case, it's just one pair of T-dualities. So the, the R matrix is just a product of translation and dilatation. They are not community. So uh, to conclude, uh, I think I, uh, so the conjecture here would be that in this case, uh, these models are actually relate to ADS 5S5, but by um, classical T-duality plus nonlinear coordinate redefinition. Classical means formal T-duality, which is mapping generalized supergravity a supergravity solution to generalized supergravity equation. So scale invariant conditions only is satisfied. So conclusions, um, so in a sense, byproducts of the studies of these integral models were not getting new insights into gauge theory, uh, unfortunately so far, but uh, we sort of understood a um, more general interesting story about uh, scale invariance conditions context of supergravity or generalized supergravity equations which happened to be also classical Kappa symmetry condition of Green-Schwartz string. 
And uh, recently, this appearance of these generalized TGLT transformations where they're combined with nonlinear cosmic redefinitions may be quite interesting. It's not clear what this actually means in general supergravity context that needs to be studied. Uh, so the usual UDLTs or TST are based on torus which with uh, linear coordinate redefinitions. Also, recent developments kind of bring, bring back a focus on poisson Lee duality and it remains to be understood what it actually means at the quantum level. Um, connection to Q-deformed Weltschitas matrices, which were discussed at these conferences in the last two or three years, is still un unclear. The issues uh, remain to be clarified. And in general, gauge theory connection is, is unclear. Uh, apart from abelian um, R matrix case, which is standard TST of ADS 5S5, where there should be connection to non commutative versions of super young mills. But generically, uh, non abelian cases seem uh, it's hard to interpret what that actually means and if there is any connection to gauge theory. Uh, in, but it might be uh, for sure if we just consider it as zero models we, and deform ADS5 only, we have breaking of four dimensional point correct symmetry. And it's not actually clear if there are examples which are of use or interest from gauge theory perspective. Thank you. In the ETA model, ETA, you mean ETA1 model? No, in the ETA0 model, but so it's unimodular. Yes. If you TDUalize, uh, if you TDUalize, that's what I was discussing. So if you TDUalize, um, depending which model, so if you take ETA model, there are two different cases. If it's unimodular, then uh, if you do TDuality plus nonlinear coordinate diffusion and another TDuality, by TDuality I mean TSC actually, then you get ADS5S5. That's the, that seems to be general uh, statement, though it's not proved as theorem, but looks like examples suggest that. So in a sense, this is quite interesting, but uh, what I'm a little bit concerned about is nonlinear coordinate definition, which means you do get one solution to another, but whether you think, can think of this as embedding into, say, string theory proper, where you have TGLT acting on open strings and whether we're actually allowed to do nonlinear coordinate definitions. Uh, so uh, you mentioned the, uh, the relation with the delegation which is a little bit investigated. And uh, uh, you said that in some cases it's a bit clear. So uh, I mean, you see uh, just on the side of the side of the sphere, it's rather clear. But already when you are including ADS and time, uh, are there also could you, could you repeat? I didn't. Uh, well, there are instructions in the particular case of TSD when you involve uh, a PDS and a time direction. Yes. Is that understood? Is it under control? Or is it. Uh, but which abstraction to TSD? To understand what is the well gauge theory there. Yeah. Um, Yes, well, uh, in, in, if you do T, TST on ADS, I, I think the, the example is uh, this non commute it depends which, if, if you include time direction, yes, it's not clear what it is, yeah. So the basic uh, prototype example is this TST on two spatial direction, which leads to this non commutative Maldacena Russo story. Um, yeah, so for time direction, one think of some analytic continuation or Euclidean theory or something. Yeah. 